Animals under general anesthesia should be closely monitored to assess anesthetic depth. Our goal is to have them at a surgical plane of anesthesia with no spontaneous or reflexive movement in response to surgical stimulation. Close anesthetic observation also plays a critical role in the prevention of anesthesia-induced cardiopulmonary arrest. Monitoring equipment can be used to aid in the assessment of anesthetic depth, but there is no substitute for proficient hands-on monitoring. Each staff member on a team should check each patient at minimum every two minutes, resulting in multiple checks on an animal per two-minute period. An anesthesia monitoring chart may be utilized to demonstrate trends and vital parameters, facilitating the monitoring of one patient by multiple people. It is important to evaluate multiple vital parameters when determining anesthetic depth as opposed to taking only one factor into consideration. Appropriate vital parameter ranges will be dependent on the drug protocols used as well as individual patient signalment. Changes in vital parameter trends or the presence of certain physical responses should be communicated immediately to the veterinarian. Heart rate often rises when a patient is light under anesthesia and lowers when a patient is deep. Keep in mind that heart rate can also change in response to surgical stimulation and fluctuating blood pressure, so do not focus solely on heart rate as an indicator of anesthetic depth. For dogs, heart rate will also vary greatly depending on the size and age of the animal, so it is more important to keep track of trends than actual numbers. To monitor heart rate, a pulse oximeter can be helpful but may not always be accurate. Therefore, physically checking the patient's heart rate should become habit. Place a hand on their chest to feel the heart beating or palpate the pulse rate digitally using the femoral, dorsal metatarsal, or metacarpal arteries. Alternatively, use a stethoscope on the chest to auscultate the heartbeat. Count the number of beats that occur over 15 seconds and multiply by four in order to get the rate in beats per minute. Ideally, a patient's respiration rate should be around 10 to 20 breaths per minute when at a surgical plane of anesthesia, but the quality and character of the respiration is just as important to monitor. A slower rate may indicate that a patient is too deep, and a higher rate may indicate that a patient is too light. To monitor respiration rate, watch the patient's chest rise and fall. If surgical drapes are obscuring the view, it may be necessary to reach under the drapes to feel the chest expanding. The reservoir bag on the anesthesia machine can also be watched as the bag will deflate as the animal inhales and inflate as the animal exhales. Pay attention, however, as surgeons' movements may give the false impression of breaths. Count the number of breaths taken over 30 seconds and multiply by two to get the rate in breaths per minute. The presence of a palpebral or blink response is a reliable indicator of anesthetic depth and is our primary indicator in cats. To check for a palpebral response, gently tap the skin near the medial canthus or inner corner of the eye with a finger to see if the patient blinks. If a blink response is present, the patient may be at too light an anesthetic plane for the surgical process, and this should be conveyed to the doctor. Remember to check both eyes, as a palpebral response may show up in one eye before the other, as a patient gradually gets lighter under anesthesia. The iris will be central when the patient is light under anesthesia, ventral when the patient is at a surgical plane of anesthesia, and central again when the patient is deeper than a surgical plane of anesthesia. It is therefore important to check other parameters when the patient has a central eye position. It is important to note that the use of a TT-DEX combination drug protocol in cats will often result in a central eye position regardless of anesthetic depth. The presence of a toe pinch or pedal withdrawal response indicates that a patient is lighter than a surgical plane of anesthesia. To test for this response, pinch a toe or the webbing between two toes to see if the patient draws back her foot. To check jaw tone, gently lift the patient's bottom jaw to feel for resistance. 
A patient that is light under anesthesia will have more jaw tone and you will feel resistance when opening the mouth. This resistance will decrease as the patient gets deeper. A patient that is deeper than a surgical plane of anesthesia will have completely absent jaw tone. A patient's mucous membrane color and capillary refill time should also be monitored while the patient is under anesthesia. It is a subjective test, but it is non-invasive and easy to perform. Look on the inside of the lip or the surface of the patient's gums to assess their color. The gums should be light pink to pink in color. Press a finger against the gums until the tissue turns white. Then release pressure and count how long it takes for the blanched spot to become pink again. A normal CRT is less than two seconds. Blood oxygen saturation, or SpO2, is measured by a pulse oximeter, which calculates the ratio of oxygenated hemoglobin present in the blood and reports this finding as a percentage. Animals intubated and connected to 100% oxygen, as is the case with gas anesthesia, should have an SpO2 of 95% or higher. Animals that are not on supplemental oxygen, as is the case with patients on injectable anesthesia alone, will typically have an SpO2 in the lower 90s or upper 80s. A patient that is not breathing frequently, has poor lung function, or is apneic, will have lower SpO2 readings and will have poor mucous membrane color. The pulse oximeter probe is usually placed on the tongue, but will often work on the fourth digit of a front paw in cats. Conduct this monitoring on all patients under anesthesia frequently. It will become a scan that can be performed quickly and abnormal parameters will begin to stand out.